Okay, this is the practice test module for the CPRP group. And uh, this uh, module is to be taken after you've reviewed all of the other modules that we've done over the seven or eight sessions. And so, um, Certified Parks and Recreation Professional Examination contains 125 multiple choice questions and must be completed in three hours or less. The following practice exam contains 50 multiple choice questions that should be answered in 75 minutes or less. Thus, the practice examination contains a sample of approximately 40% of the examination questions and should be completed in 40% of the time. So be certain to time yourself and do not allow more than 75 minutes to complete this exam. When you are finished with the examination, you may score it using the key provided at the end of this session. I'll provide that for you. Um, there's also some diagnostic analysis is provided in the back uh, of this chapter that I also have uh, ready to go for you. Remember your score will be the total number of examination items answered correctly. So it will be to your advantage to answer every question, even if you're not sure of the, um, of the answer. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, actually time this test for 75 minutes. Um, feel free to go forward, pause it, or whatever you need to do. Um, but it, I'm gonna read the question, and then I'm gonna wait approximately um, uh, 30 seconds or so for you to complete the exam, um, the question I mean. And so when, when that occurs, um, then you can go on to the next one. So I'm making it at 30 seconds, which should give you a lot of time. But if you are doing this test and practicing it a few times, make sure you allow 75 minutes and then you manage the, the uh, recording. Okay, and so here we go. Number one, to best understand the internal and external situation the agency is operating in requires a situational analysis. What is the main element of the situational analysis that looks at internal operations and external environments? Question two, your agency is updating its logo and developing a marketing plan to showcase the new logo and make it recognizable by the entire community when they see it. The agency is doing what? Okay, number three. In the following example, what is 1,000 the services personnel considered? Okay, number four, which of the following is considered a variable, a variable cost? Number five, someone leaves your organization. Your human resources director decides it is time to examine the, this position to see exactly what the person does, what skills they use, 
how much time they spend on task, and what sort of working conditions exist. The HR director is performing what task? Okay, number six. Interview questions for the candidates are driven by Number seven, you are doing a performance appraisal on our employee. What should the performance appraisal be based on? Number eight, disciplinary action can be taken for all of the following except. Number nine, responsibility for the development of a checklist for assuring uniformity and thoroughness of the facility opening and closing procedures typically lies with the Number 10, you have been assigned as the agency liaison to the project team overseeing the construction of a new recreation center. As the project progresses, the agency decides it wants a split half Dutch floor for the entrance to the office. Which of the following procedures would you use to accomplish this? During the number 11, during the past six months, the agency has been sued five times by individuals who entered one of the th agency's facilities soon after it opened and were in injured by a premises defect. Which of the following maintenance functions should the parts of recreation professional improve in order to reduce the number of incidents described above? Number 12, when developing facility safety and security plans, the parks and recreation professionals should Number 13, general supervision involves which of the following? Number 14, 
Direct leadership entails three phases. In which phase would you be most concerned with group composition, activity planning, and risk management? Number 15, an athletic supervisor of a public park and recreation agency is designing an end of season softball tournament for their 10 team softball league. The athletic supervisor wants the tournament to last two weeks and has field access Monday through Friday. Due to scheduling conflicts, only two games can be played per evening. Which of the following alternative program plans will maximize play and fit the resources available? Number 16, at its core, selecting advertising for a recreation program should be based on Number 17, which changes would make this organization chart correct without changing the direct supervisor? Number 18, which of the following are considered to be more beneficial to the community than the individual? Number 19, which of the following is true about legislative advocacy? Number 20, making your park and recreation agency the beneficiary of a life insurance policy is Number 21, which statement is false regarding a P card? Number 22, what is the break-even cost of a program that has 
$500 in fixed costs, $700 in variable costs, and we'll have a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 25 participants. Number 23, when would be the least likely time to check references on a job candidate? Number 24, which of the following is false in terms of dismissing an employee? Number 25, a brief published summary of a position that includes how and where to apply for a job is called. Okay, you're halfway done. <clears throat> Number 26, the park and recreation professional has recent, recently completed a training program for her soccer officials. Now the professional is concerned with the transfer of the officials training to the workplace. Which of the following activities best promotes training transfer by the officials? Number 27, which of the following training methods would, be, would best address or meet a skill-based training outcome? Number 28, the park and recreation professional plans to complete a natural resource assessment for their community. Which of the following activities would be most appropriate when assessing these natural resource areas? Number 29, when developing an emergency action plan, what should be the park and recreation professional? I'm sorry, let's start over. Number 29, when developing an emergency action plan, what should the park and recreation professional do first?
Number 30. Your supervisor has asked you to identify a financially feasible solution to an ongoing problem occurring at a park that is used during the community's annual summer celebration. In particular, your supervisor wants to know wants more easily wants to more easily control and direct pedestrian traffic to key park locations while limiting traffic within dark and hazardous areas. Based on your supervisor's request, which of the following would be the most appropriate solution? Number 31, when determining night lighting needs for athletic fields, which, is the following, which of the following factors is true? Number 32, your current definition of a capital inventory item developed in 1988 is that it is an item that costs in excess of $100, is tangible, has a useful life exceeding one year, and is not materially reduced in value immediately by use. During the past five years, a larger percentage of the inventory has been missing each year. Your inventory this year indicates that you are currently missing 40% of the inventory. Which, is the, which of the following strategies is the most likely solution to this problem? Number 33, a park and recreation professional is planning a bike ride on local trails for participants over 50 years of age. Which of the following participant characteristics will most likely impact program planning? Number 34, the annual Strawberry Jam Festival just finished last weekend and a comprehensive program report is being developed. What is the first step of the park and recreation professional should take in developing this report? Number 35, partnerships that fail most likely do so for what reason?
36, a document that contains a list of each park area facility and a major piece of equipment and its estimated cost minus any equipment trade-ins is Number 37, which of the following types of evaluation is conducted to improve a program while it's being implemented? Number 38, the Parks and Recreation Departments and two neighboring communities decide to run a series of holiday events together. They share authority and decision making, which are outlined in a written agreement. These, the agency form what kind of relationship? Number 39, your agency is planning a focus group to talk about a new facility use policy with the local school district. Who is the best choice to facilitate the focus group? Number 40, gift sponsorship and plan giving are examples of what type of income? Number 41, by policy, a recreation agency will subsidize the direct costs of adult recreation programs by only 10%. You have a budget with the following information for an oil painting class offered in your evening lighted school program for individuals 18 years and older. Oil painting classes expenses, and then it follows. Instructor $380, facility rental $520, program manager $100, overhead charge for agency brochure $50. What is the maximum dollar amount the agency will subsidize this program? Number 42, the process of choosing an individual who has the needed qualifications to fill a job in an organization is called Number 43, the park and recreation professional can afford to develop only one marketing campaign to increase golf play. Which of the following groups should be targeted?
Number 44, a park and recreation professional is preparing work schedules and a budget for four part-time youth day camp staff. Staff are paid $10.25 per hour and will work 30 hours per week for 20 weeks of the year. Staff do not receive benefits. What is the appropriate amount that should be budgeted for the year? Number 45, the first step in developing work schedules for staff should be Number 46, the park and recreation professional supervises an aquatic center and has been in charge of the facility since it opened in 2005. Unfortunately, the facility is regularly opening each season with a deficit in the operating budget. Often this deficit is attributed to expenses associated with mechanical failures or physical repairs needed at the start of each new season. Which of the following would be the most appropriate initial response to this issue? Number 47, which of the following describes the values, attitudes, beliefs, personality traits, and interests of your consumers? Number 48, your public agency wants to apply for a grant to build a bike trail. The grant is only open to nonprofit organizations. What is the best way to go about applying for this grant? Number 49, complex activities with extensive rules would be best experienced by adults rather than children because of what factor? And last question, number 50, hotel, motel taxes, rental car taxes, and SIN taxes are considered what type of tax? Okay, and that was that, that time to stop the test. So that was 32 minutes and 17 seconds. So if you can do that, uh, finish the test in twice the time that we just did, you'll be fine. Number 75 minutes. 
Okay, now um, I wanted to go through the um, the score sheet here. So I'm going to put this up on the screen, and I want to be sure that you can see it. So I'm going to scroll really slowly through this. You're going to have to um, um, maybe duplicate this for your answers. But once you, you should have gotten your piece of paper out, wrote your answers, but here's the correct answers to check your, your test. And so I'll just scroll through it really slowly so that you can see the answers on the score sheet. I believe I can maybe even make it smaller. I hope that's coming through. So there's all 50 of them right there. Now what you need to do is you need to sum up the number of total uh, of correct answers right here in this box, then divide the number of correct answers by 50 to give you your percentage. If your percentage is 85 or greater, you have passed. If not, see the next page. And so this is what they want you to do. They want you to um, fill this out, sum the number of correct answers, divide the number of correct answers by 50, and then I should give you hopefully 85% or more. If not, we're gonna to go to the next page. And here we go. So on this page, um, you'll see, like if you miss number one, for example, let's say you put A. You come down here to number one, and that's in the communication chapter. So you can kind of see where you are having a deficit, or if you have a number of wrong answers in communication chapter, you might want to go reread that chapter. So this is how you diagnose uh, what you're doing. So I'm going to leave it on here for a second so you can pause it, copy it, and I'm going to scroll through very slowly. Just pause it and um, recreate this sheet if, you, if you'd like to. Okay, the next, the next page gives you some more diagnosis. And if you go through and you categorize all your communication answers, this is if you got 85 or less uh, percent, but you can, you can see if, how you did on each one of these particular sections too. So carrying that example of number one, all the communications. So let's say you got, um, out of all the communications answers, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight communication questions. Let's say you got four of them right. So you come down here, you put four, you divide it by num the eight, and you'll see that you only got 50%, <clears throat> okay? And so um, you'd want to go back and study uh, chapter two of the study guide, or in this case, go back and look at the communications module on your online study guide and really dive into it a little deeper and you can go back and listen to our session on communications. So that's, that's how I would approach that. Finance, the sum of all the correct answers that you got in the finance sections and divide it by nine. Same rule applies. Human resources, divide the number that you of correct answers by 11. Operations, the sum of the correct answers in operations by 12. And then programming, the same thing, uh, divide the number of correct answers by 10. And I have a little disclaimer here. It's um, really good for you all to know that this examination re represents approximately 40% of what you'll be required to complete on the actual Certified Parks and Recreation Professional Examination. The scoring is therefore not a perfect match with that of the actual CPRP examination. On the ex actual exam, it is not necessary to pass each section. Your score is a sum of all the correct answers. This diagnostic, diagnostic section that I just showed you is designed to help you identify 
where you may need, may need additional study. If based on a comparison of your percentages scores, you do significantly worse on one section, you need to complete additional study guide, um, additional study on that section is basically what they're saying. And so, um, again, uh, I would retake the test over and over and do that. Now here is um, another page that shows you um, which domain the, the uh, items are in. So in other words, uh, number one, communication, and this would be if you had the book, but I'm gonna show it to you because some of you bought the book. So you would want um, to, like in communication, item one, the domain is one and the task is P. So you would go into your book and one is communication and the task is P and that would be the chapter that you would read in order to find out a little bit more information on the question number one. Okay, and I just wanna conclude. Um, oh, and there's the domains down there. Um, I just want to conclude that the passing point on the actual examination is set by standard procedures that involve the expert judgment of the examination committee uh, about the amount of knowledge that one should demonstrate to warrant the CPRP designation. Each examination form slightly varies in difficulty. Therefore, the number of correct answers required to pass, to pass can also vary slightly. To be fair to the test candidates, a statistical pr procedure known as equating is used to assure comparabil compa uh, comparability of the passing point on any one um, administration of the exam, which previous, uh, with the previous administrations of the exam. In other words, the passing point has typically been 85% suggested to being required to pass. Um, the 85% value was chosen to help ensure that you remain comfortably above the level required to pass the actual examination. It is intended that your level of performance on the practice examination will be a good indicator of how you will perform on the actual examination. However, there are many factors that affect a test candidate's performance on an examination. While the items on this practice exam are intended to be comparable to those on the actual examination, the difficulty of the practice test is not known. Thus, passing the practice exam does not guarantee that you will pass the CPRP examination. However, it's a good indicator. That concludes the testing portion and all this, of all the study sessions that we did online. I appreciate your time and your uh, commitment to this, and I wish you the best in passing your CPRP exam. Thank you very much.